Why, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Voice of the Rings. And this is a Rise to War Legacy playlist, my friends, on Voice of the Rings. I'm your host and guys on Iron Shield, as always. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And today, I want to talk about, real quick, about people for newer players of Rise to War, the phone game. What building should you focus on, right? Okay, so first things off the bat is if you play the game, you will know there's this little scroll, right? And I'm going to pop up here and see if you can... You can't see the scroll. I'm going to move over. All right, I'm going to move to here for a second. Now, over here, you see there's a little scroll. So if you click this scroll, it's going to give you basically free stuff as you go, but it also will help you on different objectives, like have a higher... Get a higher tier tile, build certain buildings in what order, okay? So you have to build these buildings to continue. But now with that aside, all right? So these are buildings that are good to want to build. But with that aside, let's talk about some thinking patterns you should have when you're built when you're upgrading your buildings, okay? So let's go into your base, right? And then you go down here to build, right? Or you could also click the little hourglass thing right out here, this little thing. And then, you know, go to your structures and click Q and it'll bring you to the same spot inside, okay? So either way you can do that. Or if you're in your base, you click on build right here at the bottom left. All right? So there's a couple different things. Let's let's talk about the layout of the screen real quick, real fast for you guys. Okay, so this one is your build, build of your settlement, right? So this is all your uh, buildings that are part of your base, right? So again, and then there's going to be these things. They're technically in your base too, but they're the different quarters, right? So there's like different ones, and they change depending on what faction you're playing in what order over here. But if you're saying we're good side, we're not going to be talking about the evil, but I'm sure the evil are very similar with their... Um, their building structures, but of course their names of their peoples are probably different. It's probably like evil men, orcs, that kind of thing, from what I've seen. Um, but anyway, Rohirrim Quarters, I'm playing Rohan, so again, it's gonna be the first thing that's gonna pop up. If you're playing Erebor, the first thing's gonna be Dwarves. If you're playing Gondor, the first thing is gonna be is Gondor. If you're playing Lothlorien or Linden, the first thing is gonna be Elves. And then they will be random in, in a certain order that the, the devs picked on what will be next in the order. So anyway, again, Follow that little building item, but here's what we have to think about. All right, so first thing you want to think about is, well, I need to start getting my resources up, right? So the first thing, again, follow that little beginning thing, and it'll it'll show you the buildings you need to build in one order. You're completely confused right off the bat when you first start the game, but then you're going to start having to think about a few things. So you look at all these. Storage, what does storage do? Well, basically, it just allows you to have a higher cap on earning. So let's say you're not playing the game for five hours, right? Because you the game off. And it keeps you keep earning resources from all the tiles you have. Well, at a certain point, those resources are going to cap. And you won't earn any more. So you want this to be as big as it can at where you are in the game. Now, again, early in the game, let's say you only make... Again, it shows you, right, how much uh, you have. And then uh, you can look at how much you're making an hour, by the way, if you go out. And look at the top here. And it shows you how much each thing is making an hour if you click on it, right? So again, you could do the math. You could be like, okay, well, my land bonuses are giving me eighteen thousand an hour. So if I have, if I have kind of a million cap, then you can do the math. And here's your total. You're making an hour forty-three million, right, with your fellowship bonuses. I mean, forty-three thousand. So that's going to take a good amount of hours to fill up to a million, right? So yeah, I don't really need to upgrade my storage right now, right? So that's a good way to think about that. And again, the more, the bigger the building upgrade, the more expensive it costs. So that's why later in the game you'll have to do bigger building things. For example, it was very costly and expensive and takes a long time to upgrade to level 9 of your base, right? So that's what I just started a couple hours back. Um, but anyway, so if you're going to buy a storage thing, right, um, do it because you're having problems with capping. Otherwise, don't worry about it, right? Just just upgrade it when the little quest thing tells you you need to upgrade this to upgrade the next thing. Because again, remember, there is an interesting thing. Sometimes they'll have a little quest thing and it'll say you can't upgrade it. If you click on it, so it can't, I can't upgrade this until I have a, a, a great main hall level nine. Okay. So that's another thing. If you think about the orders, so look at them ahead and say, oh, okay. Oh, well, this one needs a Rohirrim quarters nine. So let me look at the Rohirrim quarters. It's eight. Oh, well, this one needs a main hall nine. So then I go to my main hall, right? You see how that works? And now you need to have this upgraded so I can upgrade the others, right? Right. Okay. If you get that. So that's the first thing you need to think about when you're doing this, when you're buildings. The next thing is see this little thing up here. That is the same thing as the questing thing. So it actually, I have to finish this to get through my little quest thing that will take me to chapter, finish chapter 19. So again, I have to finish the main hall to get that Rohirrim quarters to get other things, right? All right, good. Now you know orders of things, thinking about orders of things. Now the next thing, what if I don't want to upgrade something? Because sometimes they won't 
have you upgrade something to continue the quest. Well, I would recommend that most of your stone, grain, all of these, you keep them near max if possible, right? And again, if you're having trouble with one resource rather than another, let's say you have very little stone, right? You have a bunch of wood, a bunch of trees, and a bunch of iron. This never happens, okay? So the real things you usually have troubles with is iron, right? <laughs> iron or, or food. It feels like that's always the hardest thing early. But um, but let's say you were having trouble with stone. Well, when you upgrade a stone place, it costs no stone to upgrade. So the left side is what it costs. The right side is what is in your uh, storage, right? So this is not what you earn per hour. This is what's in your storage right at that moment, okay? So again, it costs no stone. So let's say I have wood and iron, so I would upgrade this, right? Upgrade as much as I can until it won't let me until I need to upgrade the next thing, right? So that's what you'd want to do with those four things, right? Lumber, stone, or in that. Barracks. Now, what is the barracks, you ask? Well, it does explain right here, but basically what this means is, again, it's kind of like, think of barracks kind of like your storage, but for your troops, right? There's a limit to how many troops you can build up and have at one time, okay? So that's what the barracks is for, basically. And it will be required to be upgraded to upgrade other things sometimes. So again, you'll have to upgrade it for that too. But again, it's how many troops. So again, you don't need to have this up right at the beginning because you'll notice you'll never have your barracks completely full if you jump to your barracks real quick. That number is this up here, right? So again, my cap is at 560. And when that barracks is upgraded, this will go up the cap. And these are a little bit different too. I'll explain that in another video. But um, anyway, I, I will not cap this barracks anytime soon. End game, you start capping it. But if you're playing a lot, you should always be heavy trying to have your troops somewhere in the 70-80% range. You're using them. You're healing them. You're recruiting them at, in a rotation, right? Okay? We'll talk about that in another video. Uh, so now the next thing we need to think about, right, is what is the apothecary, right? Well, the apothecary is your healing. So whenever if you do a battle, you have units that die and units that are wounded. Wounded go to your, your apothecary, right? So basically, again... The, the commander cap, that's how many wounded you can have. So if you're wounded or capped, it's like, oh, sorry, guys. Um, the hospital's full. You're going to have to die now. <laughs> Basically is what happens, which is sad. They die, right? If you're wounded or if your wounded place is capped and you haven't healed them yet. So again, sometimes a little trick is if, you're, if your people are wounded and you go to your little treatment area here, you can click it and you can actually, or go to your apothecary, you can actually speed it up with, with either a speed up if you have it or uh, um, or the gems and something that's good if see if this is the max thing right here right so when you're level 10 with your or when your apothecary is max it'll be 200 you can have which is a lot of wounded okay but you want to be rotating them through again another little trick if you have a ton of wounded let's say you're a hundred and uh, you're 110 out of 120 right there right and your barracks is full and you can't recruit anyone else you don't you it won't actually let you finish healing them but what you can do right it's a little it's a little another roundabout thing is that you can leave some wounded troops in here right and they'll just stay in there and then when you have troops die and your max barracks is filled you can immediately start healing these guys again you can kind of work it with your ca cap your cap of your barracks all right it's a little trick you can kind of use this as part of your cap. Have your wounded in here, kind of stand by, you know, have some more die in your thing when it's max. Then start healing these guys and let more wounded come in here. Because you can get more wounded as you're healing the current wounded. All right? So that's an interesting thing. We'll talk about that later, too. But anyway, we're back to building. Let's focus on building because I want to focus this one on building. Okay? So, again, so you want to think about that, right? So the apothecary, again, it's kind of like the storage thing, same thing. And how fast they're healed. That's another bonus to upgrading it. Okay? So next thing, let me get a quick little drink here. What is the conscription post? All right. Well, the conscription post, you'll have to upgrade it a lot to be able to upgrade other things. But it conscription hiring limit, right? So this means how many people you can actually hire in one go. So it's nice to have this higher level because when you go to sleep at night, you want to hire, let's say, it'll, till the beginning, it lets you hire like 200 guys, right? Later, when this is higher level, you can hire like 1,000 and it's a matter it does change the time right of how long so for example to hire 200 it only it's like an hour and a half two hours you have to get on every two hours to hire more troops more troops more troops but it's kind of nice when this is higher level and it takes 12 hours to hire a thousand troops and then you can go to bed let them hire when you wake up the next day all your troops you have way more troops than you would have had in only two hours with 200 guys okay so that's one bonus the second bonus is that it actually decreases the time of the con conscripting because the higher tier units cost longer to conscript so you want this to be higher when you're getting tier two and three units and then another thing is conscription queue times and higher queues okay so that is we got to pop over a little bit to barracks and i'm going to do a video on barracks too so you know 
uh, you can check that out. But um, it matters with uh, these buttons down here. I'm going to move right here. So basically how many different re different groups of people you can be conscripting. So right now I can be conscripting three at this point in the game. There is one more later when my conscripting post is higher level where I'll be able to have a fourth slot for hi hiring. I mean conscripting, which is your normal units. And then hiring are a little bit different thing. We'll talk about that in the barracks video. But um, again, I have three slots right now and I'll have another one when I upgraded the conscripting post to four. So you get four and four, okay? All right, so that's the conscripting post, if I can say that word. And now we're going to talk about right here, the Fellowship Hall. What does the Fellowship Hall do? Okay, well, this is important to have earlier, and it's rather cheap to upgrade, so I would recommend upgrading it as soon as you can. But basically, I have it max level, um, 5 out of 5. Speed of how much people can help you with building buildings, okay? So, and then times you can be helped and maximum speed, all right? So what does this mean? Well, when, you go, when you're in a fellowship, let's go down to the fellowship thing down here at the bottom. You go to the little help button that is underneath me here right there. You click the little help button. And basically, when there's people here, see these people? So his, fellow, his fellowship hall is not max, right? Because he can only be helped five times, right? And these people are because they can be helped nine times. So I'm gonna help them all, right? So now what happens is that gave them a little increase. So it took off, shaved a few minutes off their building queue. Which again, what is the building queue? Well, let's go back to our building. And as you can see right here, another 16 hours left on this, right? Well, I could get 30 minutes taken off that times nine right now because of my fellowship hall, right? So a maximum of nine or 1% speed increase. But again, if it's really, really big, it's a maximum of this because 1% would be a lot. If you had 9% decrease off 25 hours or something, right? So there's, there's a cap on it too. But again, this is good to have early on for your fellowship, especially if you have a big fellowship to all help each other, good to have. All right, the next thing. This is so important, you guys, the market, okay? So early on in the market, having the ratio only be 70 or 80% at four and five is so much better than the low 40%, 50% ratio loss when you do trading, because this really helps. All this is for is if you are lacking a certain resource a lot on your territory area and you can't get it, and what you you have a massive increase. Let's look at our resources again. For example, you can see I'd get a lot less food than I get wood. So I can substitute getting more food by going into my market here, going down to barter, and switching out certain amounts. But you see how it's a 10 to seven ratio right now? And then next time I upgrade it, when it's maxed, you can have a 10 to 8 ratio, which means when I give a certain amount of this, you see how I lose this much and gain this much of that resource? All right. It's a simple trading thing, right? But again, it's really bad early. I would recommend doing your best to restrain from using the trading thing early because you lose so many resources. Just do a tiny bit of trading when it's like 10 to 6 or whatever, 10 to 5. The, it just you lose so many resources so just do it if you only need like you know a thousand more resources so you can trade a little you know what i mean but i wouldn't do big tradings of you know hundreds of thousands until you have this at seven ten to seven or eight to, which is again i'm getting sidetracked for you but until this is level four or five okay this is important you want to try to upgrade this as soon as you can. Again, I can't get it to five right now because I need my haul to be nine. So when I get my haul to nine, this will probably be something that I aim for to immediately upgrade, right? As long, including my other places, these, including my uh, increase of resources. Okay. All right. The next thing we're going to talk about is the battlements. These. Okay. So unless you are being attacked, your main base, your actual base. I'm not talking about your uh, like. This is your settlement, okay? So your settlement is your main base. It is this. It is not a fort. It's not one of these little forts that you put on the map, okay? If you want to upgrade those, you have to use ring power. We'll have another video on that. But this settlement, okay? So the you really want to think about this upgrade later on. All right, that's the wrong button. Excuse me. Um, you want to think about doing battlements later on. They're real cheap, the first two or three, so you can just toss them in because they don't cost anything. But later, they're going to really start costing you more and more, and it's really not worth it. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade it right now because I have free slots to use, and it's really not that expensive for me, 4 out of 10. But again, if you're not going to be having your keep at the your settlement early in the game at the front line, and you're in the middle of your land kind of just getting tiles and stuff early, you don't need to upgrade this. So upgrade this later on when you have more resources to spend. Okay? That's not a big priority early unless you're being attacked all the time and your base is like getting moved because whenever you lose your full settlement durability it moves it if that's happening and you lose you lose resources if that's happening then you might want to upgrade that but yeah anyway yeah again 
Uh, Dark Embassy. What is the Dark Embassy? Okay, so the Dark Embassy is, again, so it does increase your barracks capacity as well, slightly, which is cool. And it also increases the hiring queues. Okay, oh, you know what? Actually, I thought hiring queues came from... I might have to make a correction for you guys right now. No, no, it gives one her hiring queue too. Okay, interesting. So, you know what? I think construction posts give up to two hiring queues at max. I think you get the other two from the Dark Embassy, just so you know. Now, again... What is hiring? Hiring are camps that are out in the wilderness and um, camps that you can make for the other the other side faction, whether you're good or evil. So, for example, I have a Breaker Lair, which is an Isengard faction, so I can hire these orc units to use because I'm not on a role-playing server, so I can have both good and bad units, even on the good side. Um, again, that goes for the bad side on this server, too. But again, that's what hiring is. When you go into your hiring, you're going to be hiring either those or it's going to be some special unit on the map, which is these. You go up here, right? And, you know, let's say it's, uh, you know, great beasts, right? This is, a, this is a special thing. So you capture this and then you can hire from it, right? Okay. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Moving on to the next thing. We're almost finished, my friends, for this building episode here uh, for what you should focus on. Military Academy. You guys, this is crucial. This is very expensive to upgrade, but what this does is it actually increases how many groups of units all your heroes can have. So there's a few ways to do this, right? So let's just look at a random hero right now. We're going to look at my Gimli, okay? So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go on to Gimli. Oh, actually, no, I don't want to go here. Um, I'm just going to click on Gimli. You can look up here. See this right here? See how it says 59 out of 59? Uh, units that he can have this number right here will increase in two different ways when you level up you get more slots as as your hero gets to max level which is 50 he'll have a limited amount of slots he can have right but he also they also all get increased slots of how many troops that he can actually have with that and that is very important for taking tiles and doing battles right because your army is just way more strong because way more that's not, i don't know that's a word but uh yeah it's just a lot stronger right because of that so that's guys that's extremely important okay i, I would just really 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 important the uh the military academy upgrade so that's a big one I would focus on. If you have the extra resources, use it. Again, I wouldn't focus on it over maybe the market and these other ones, but I would definitely focus it. It's good. The Bowery Tower. Now, this is another one that's later for later in the game. Again, see, I can't get it till 9 anyway. And this is basically whenever you take your main settlement gets attacked, it does damage back to their troops. So it gives you kind of a bonus on home turf kind of thing. Again, not super needed priority. All right. Now, let's just really run through these real quick and talk about the quarters, okay? Since I told you about these. Again, you're going to be jumping between upgrading quarters and other things. But here's what you have to think about with quarters when it comes to what do I upgrade first. What heroes are you using? Okay, this is really important, right? And I have a bunch of videos that I've done on different heroes and what good builds and characters and units to use with them. But um, we're going to be adding more to the channel too. Me being me and my friend Jethros. Um, but again, these are... Uh, what you need to think about with this is this is a very important. A lot of people don't realize this. The quarters actually will also increase things, okay? So they will increase your uh, production on certain things. So we're here in grain production goes up food so it's basically like another farm okay and elves are wood so it's like another wood chopping place dwarves i think are iron yep and um numenorians are stone right so those will all increase your stone production as you level those up okay so these top ones should all be kind of a high priority to get going not just that they all increase your levy amount what is your levy amount well it's gold which you know gold is a very important resource for upgrading stats on your unit groups right like your your dwarf warriors or your axe doors or your gondor knights you know that kind of thing it's important and you levy them here right so one thing too when you first start the game this is important guys make sure you do a couple upgrades first on your cheap because if you take a few seconds early to do upgrades on on buildings it only takes three seconds to upgrade them for the first few levels not 16 hours um, try to get, make sure you upgrade your quarters that you can upgrade a few times because then the gold levy's higher so wait a few hours before leveling, levying this if there's still one counting down. If there's not, if it's a five out of five, go ahead and levy one and then wait, right? Let it keep charging for the next one and make sure you upgrade this because this number will go up depending on all your quarters, okay? So that's the thing about gold that's important. You have to remember, all right? So I hope this is helping you guys out. So don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm trying to go in through it methodically where you can follow and you can go back through and watch this if you need to. But 
All right, so now we're going to talk about the quarters, okay? More. Again, what commander are you using, right? If you're using a horse commander, you want to be getting your stables up fast if you're Rohan or if you're Gondor. You want to be doing quick on your horse stables, right? If you have a unit that uses that. If you want to have a little of both, like soldiers and that, again, as you can see, I was upgrading to get Dine, but I wasn't worrying about these right now because I don't have any heroes that are really going to use these at this time, even though Guard of the Tower are really good for some heroes. Like, I believe Boromir uses them really good and a couple others. But, um, again, I'm trying to get my horses up because I'm Rohan. So, again, I'm going to continue to go for my um, Cataphract, right? Uh, so, that's a good thing. And, again, I went for Bow Knights. I didn't even worry about Elven Archers or that yet. Yet. Again, remember, this video is about what's the what should you be focusing on, right, for building. What should you be aiming for, right? That's the goal of this video. Again, I have Dwarf Heroes, so I've been focusing on trying to get these two up. And also, I'm trying to get the goats. So, I'm kind of just across the board trying to get these up. Because I can use these as my my rider heroes like Theoden, but then at the same time I need these for Dwalin and Gimli. All right, my dwarves. So again, that's and then of course whatever faction you're playing, you want to try to get to this. But this is end game because you have to have your thing ten, and it takes a long time to upgrade and all that stuff. Okay, that's your tier four unit for whatever faction you're playing. Each faction gets a special tier four unit. So anyway. I think that's good. I think that's what you guys needed to know. And again, when you upgrade all these little buildings, depending on which one you're upgrading, it reduces the time they take to con conscript. It reduces um, the uh, for all the different, just yeah, time for all of them. That's what it does. For all four different units that are in it. And again, at certain levels, you get certain things. So like this level three training ground right now, it doesn't let me, I unlock Duodyne if I get this to training level five. Same thing you see here. Um, it shows that it will, my next upgrade for five to six will increase all their speeds. But since I got it to five, I unlocked um, Cavaliers. All right. All right. Sweet. We really talked through the building stuff. So one quick overview, two minutes. All right. Two minute overview to finish the video. So your brains aren't going, I don't know if I followed all that. All right. Never fear. We're going to talk about it right now. Main things you need to focus on. All right. Main things. Early on, your first two, you're only going to have probably the first two things open. You won't be able to get to dwarves or humans yet at all. That's another thing you have to remember. Um, make sure you upgrade this a few times. See, your gold levy goes up, and this resources. Try to keep all your quarters at the top upgraded as much as you can. They do get more expensive later. But, so that's one important thing for their resources and, their, and the gold levy. Next thing is apothecary and storage. Just keep them to where you don't max out all the time. You don't need to upgrade those unless the quest thing tells you to upgrade them, right? Like I told you at the beginning. Barracks, same thing. Capacity, it's this, all these things at the top. They are not high priority right at the beginning or even mid game. Just keep them slightly upgraded a little bit. The ones you really want to be upgrading or whichever ones that the quest is telling you to upgrade to get to the next chapter or um, fellowship hall early is great. Focus on all the food places, right? All the resource places, the market. Those are huge. Those are really important. Another big one, so I would tell you, those in the market are like number one, tied with Military Academy for helping you take tiles. You need to be upgrading this, guys. Dark Embassy, unless you're going for getting hired units, that's a little bit low on the thing. So it really matters if you're going to be having the little camps outside you build, which will be something with ring power. We'll talk about that in the ring power episode. Um, but don't worry about that one. That's not in big. Battlements and ba bow towers, those are for later in the game. You don't need to worry about those. Fellowship Hall is a big one. And these top four are pretty much upgrade them when it tells you to upgrade them with the quests. So you can upgrade the main hall to continue to upgrade your quarters and whichever units you're using in the order. Upgrade the things in the order of the units you want to use, right? And again, if you're new and you're learning about units, that's going to be trial and error. Or you could check out some of my other videos about different units, which I might do some videos on different units for you guys. So, anyway, there you go. There's your little overview. Hope that helped you guys out. We did that under 25 minutes. Ha ha ha. Wonderful. I want to shout out to my Patreon. Thank you for your support, Mr. Ravel. As a royal god Patreon and everyone else supporting the channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe, you guys. Thank you for your likes and subscribes. I am your host and guys on Iron Shield, as always. And you guys have a wonderful day in Middle Earth.